Here's today's first word, Daily Devotion. September the 22nd is a very special day. You say, why is this day special? Because it's the 265th day of the year. Now, what does that mean? It means there's 100 days left in the year. All right, what does that mean? It means there's 100 episodes left of our first word, Daily Devotion. Look how far we've come. We're down to the last 100. Christmas time's coming, by the way. Let me go ahead and put that on your radar. (laughs) Christmas time is coming. Time to get the list and go shopping. Well, maybe not yet. Let's look at September the 22nd. Isaiah chapter 15, or let's just go ahead and to verse 16, and let's look at verse 3. Give counsel, grant justice, make your shade like night, the height of noon, shelter the outcast, do not reveal the fugitive, Let the outcast of Moab sojourn sojourn among you be a shelter to them from the destroyer. When the oppressor is no more and destruction has ceased, he who tramples underfoot has vanished from the land. Then a throne will be established, look at this language, in steadfast love, and on it will sit in faithfulness in the tent of David, one who judges and seeks justice and is swift to do righteousness. And so here we are. Remember, we're talking about the end of time. We're talking about judgment. But in the midst of darkness, the light of hope dawns. And the light of hope dawns as steadfast love. Verse 4 of chapter 17. In that day, the glory of Jacob will be brought low, and the fat of his flesh will grow lean. But we remember why God is bringing all these judgments, so that he can save the humble and bring low the proud. Verse 7, in that day, man will look to his maker and his eyes will look on the Holy One of Israel. He will not look to the altars, the work of his hands. He will not look on what his own fingers have made, either the asherim or the altars of incense. And then verse 9, in that day, there again, we're looking ahead to the future. Verse 10, for you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, Though you plant pleasant plants and sow the vine branch of a stranger, though you make them grow on the day that you plant them and make them blossom in the morning that you sow, yet the harvest will flee away in a day of grief and incurable pain. In other words, God says he's going to take the supposed success that you think that you have outside of his ways and show that anything outside of his ways, even it though may appear like a like a bushy bush or a choice vine, that will be brought about to nothing. In chapter 18 and verse 7, At that time tribute will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering whose land the rivers divide. Look ahead then to chapter 19 and verse 16. In that day the Egyptians will be like women, Tremble with fear before the hand that the Lord of hosts shakes over them. Verse 18, in that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt that speak the language of Canaan. Swear allegiance to the Lord of hosts. One of these will be called the city of destruction. Verse 19, in that day, there again, we're looking ahead to the future. Verse 21, in that day, uh, worship and sacrifice offering. They will make vows to the Lord, perform them. The Lord will strike, uh, strike Israel, strike Egypt, striking and healing. Look at the language, striking and healing. And they will return to the Lord, and he will listen to their pleas for mercy, and he will heal them. There again, judgment, but salvation in the midst of judgment. Verse 23, in that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will come into Egypt, Egypt into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. So the nations are gathering to worship the Lord. And he has to do all this to uh, to increase worship on the earth. Verse 24, in that day will be, or in that day, Israel will be the third with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the earth, whom the Lord of hosts has blessed, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. And so the salvation that God brings to Israel is a salvation that is he intends to share with the whole world. What good news we have in Isaiah today. 
Now let's turn over to Thessalonians 2. Let's look at Thessalonians 2, verse, verse 19. What is our hope of joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at His coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. Chapter 3. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we're willing to be left behind at Athens alone. We sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, listen to the language, to establish and exhort you in your faith that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know, look at this language, that we were destined for this. Skip down to verse 11. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another for all as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Now let's look at Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In night my hand is stretched out without wearying my soul refuses to be comforted. And so here again, we have this uh, this person who's in the midst of affliction. But look at verse 10. Then I said, I'll appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. This is, by the way, why we're doing our reading, why we're soaking our minds and hearts this year in Holy Scripture, because we want to ponder all His works and meditate on his mighty deeds. We want to remember what 77.13 says, Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders, made known your mighty deeds among the people. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. When the water saw you, O God, when the water saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, and skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the world when your lightnings light up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And the implication then is if God could do that then, how much more will he do now? He indeed has increased salvation, not only for his people, but over the whole earth. And by the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, we get to be partakers in that glorious salvation.